advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are continuing the Madara series. Uh, last we found Hografar, or, or some gross, um, really that Tangle thing. Pink yep, Ooh, yep, yeah, that Christ. that thing in a room underneath, underneath Elenia. Mm, sexy. And uh, it completely disemboweled some thief, which the thief turned into some... Uh, creature turned into that. Yeah, and then he just fucking he just went inside uh, yeah. Nightingale. Yeah, uh, which was hot. Yeah, but and then we ran off, and that's when Rook showed us our his his um, slave girlfriend, whatever weird spirit girl you got. Uh, yeah, I, my spirit, uh, my imaginary friend. <laughs> yep. So and she is helping us find uh, a way out of here, which is where we will continue. Mm -hmm. This one is most likely going to be. Um. Uh. uh a heard? narrative episode, because there's just a lot of text here. So let's continue. We had to go back to a way out. A way out. Your friends are good at this. Surrey glided along in front of Rook as they made their way through the ruined halls. It seemed the closer they were to the surface, the more it crumbled away, eaten by time and air, and corroded into crumbling metal or chalk-like rock. Yeah. Rook still had a weapon within reach if he needed it, but wasn't holding it ready anymore. So far, they had managed to avoid anything that might try to stop them from leaving the vaults. In fact, they saw nothing more dangerous than occasional stray vermin. It seemed the lesser creatures of the upper vault had learned to stay away, probably due to Hografar's nearby presence. Thanks for the directions. We'll have to bring a map next time we go exploring, Remy said. Maybe next time we can pick somewhere safer to adventure. We could help innkeepers deal with the rats in their basements, maybe. Inquiry? Suri didn't meet Remy's eyes so much as she watched her wings. Do the mortals of this realm routinely invoke the help of skilled professionals to get them out of minor problems they could have solved on their own? When okay, so your friend's a huge <laughs> passive-aggressive kind. <laughs> Involving experienced instituted graduates be an unwise investment of your time? No, Zeke grunted. On Earth, they did. People on Madara usually have more sense. Zeke left a trail of smoke behind him. Rook wondered where this new cigarette had come from, <laughs> but took it as a good sign. They were recovering from their experience, <laughs> except maybe Nightingale. Her He's skin was strangely <laughs> pale, and like she took every spare stomach. moment to rest that she could. Surrey slowed a little as she considered Zeke's words, then shrugged. It was one of the first gestures she had learned to imitate, though Rook still wasn't sure if it meant the same thing to her. This is the way out. The security bar on the other side is unlocked, so you should be able to open it. She gestured at a strange section of wall where intricate metal clamps anchored to a round metal door. There had been words written here once, but Rook couldn't make them out anymore. They pushed together, and the rusting door squeaked slowly open, letting them out into the ground surrounding the white spires. Zeke led the group towards his family manor, and nearly 20 minutes later they had arrived at the Zhang house, a large white building Zeke called home. <laughs> yes, this is my manor. My long uh, house, my shong house. Uh, Rook, you can have the barn. Zhong house in the middle of <laughs> the street. Zhong house. Where you like a lot of women's feet. Anyway, <laughs> continue to a dark passenger. Dark passenger. Wha-bam! <laughs> dark passenger! And that is right here. 45 minute. No. <laughs> a dark passenger. Nightingale collapsed onto the ground, pressing her face against it for a few seconds. She was fairly certain she'd never been happier to be away from adventure in her life. We made it! Thank God! She let out an exhausted sigh. <coughs> Behind her, Surrey's voice was barely a whisper. What is this place? It seems to be humming with magical energy. Zeke moved to lock the door behind them with a loud click, then turned towards Surrey. My family uses it as a dorm for their kids while they attend the Institute. I've been told it was already built into the foundation of the rock when this land was claimed. It's supposed to have various magical enchantments to keep us safe. It seems it just might. Surrey floated gently past Nightingale, looking between each of Rook's friends. It was very nice to meet you all. I don't think I've ever seen so much of your world at once. Perhaps it will happen again. Maybe... Zeke began, but the spirit didn't linger to hear it. There was a faint pop and a flash of purple light. The place she'd been was empty and Rook's amulet ceased to glow. Sorry about that, 
Suri's a little oblivious to common courtesy. Rook offered his hand to Nightingale. Are you all right? Yeah. Nightingale took the offered hand rising again. It was more than a little strain on her body, but she managed not to sway. I think... I think I just need some rest. We should visit the castle first. Rick watched her, looking concerned. Zeke and Remy were watching her, too. Your father has excellent doctors. After what happened... Nothing happened! Nightingale found herself tensing, her tail snapping once behind her. Even as she said it, she saw a brief image of Black Ikor boiling from the dead thief's mouth. Really? Ikor. You mentioned that something had come out of the thief. Some kind of dark creature? Rook looked from Remy to Zeke. Did either of you see what happened to Nightingale? Nah. Zeke looked down, <laughs> frowning. After that thing Fucker. knocked me back, it gets a little fuzzy. Remy nodded. My dumb wings were in the way. I didn't get up again until I heard her scream. Nightingale could only remember a strange amorphous shape sprouting towards her after she tried to save the dying thief. She shivered, glancing down at the ruins of her dress. It was brown and crusty with dirt and dried blood. She tried to push the image from her mind. That thing! It called itself Hogrifar, right? You must have hit me first, that's all. You're fine, I'm fine? She was shaking her head. How about we don't go anywhere near my father tonight, Rook? <laughs> Remember, he's the reason I went into the damn vaults in the first place. I... All right, Rook sighed. I'm not sure where else we would go, though. You could crash here. Zeke gestured at the living room with a lit cigarette. We've got this whole mansion and everything. Might as well use a few of the extra rooms. You too, Remy. After a night like this, you probably need as much sleep as the rest of us. A shower. Perfect. Nightingale nodded, forcing more enthusiasm into the response than she really felt. The next hour passed in a blur to Nightingale. She ducked away first to wash off all the blood and change into clean clothes. Oh, yeah. After that, she ate some leftover soup as Zeke prepared a few spare rooms for their use. Nightingale fell asleep nearly instantly. However, it was not a restful night. Nightingale dreamed of the white vaults where the floor stretched away to an endless darkness and an alien monstrosity of writhing limbs guarded something she wanted. Hogrifar was there its proportions even more hideous than she remembered. The shadows of its disparate parts writhed, all reaching for her. Nightingale watched herself try in vain to save the thief, watched him die before her eyes. Something even worse than the freakish hographer poured from the corpse and latched onto her face. Its body a hideous mass of swirling eyes and mouths and teeth. Eventually, she saw herself collapse, overwhelmed by the agony she remembered quite well. Her dream self's eyes opened, staring at her. There was something dark behind them, an alien intelligence anathema to life as she knew it. Nightingale woke with a start, shooting up right in the gigantic four-poster. The early light of dawn streamed in from one window, filling the room with its glow. Something reached for her shoulder, blocking out the light. Nightingale jerked violently away, twisting off the bed and landing with a pained thump on the floor. She came back up a second later, panting with her weapon in hand, all trace of drowsiness gone. There was nothing there. Nightingale took a deep breath to calm herself. She set her weapon down finally, then made her way downstairs. The kitchen was busy, though not with servants or staff. Instead, she was more than a little surprised to see Remy, Rook, and Zeke already waiting. Hey, Knight. Zeke raised a spatula in mock salute. Feeling better? Yeah. Nightingale didn't meet his eyes as she lied, looking around at the mess. Eggs and flour were everywhere, along with other stains she couldn't easily identify. Hmm. Did something blow up? <laughs> yes. See? Well, it's other stains she couldn't identify. <laughs> it's almost like, how can you not just make simple eggs? Like, why, why is every time it's like teenagers involved, they just don't know how to cook? It's like, that's, that, it cannot be that hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, what the fuck do I do with this? <laughs> do I just get the goo and just... Do <laughs> I fucking hate hard-boiled eggs. They're so crunchy. I'm <laughs> supposed to remove the shell. <laughs> Again, no. Remy and Rick answered at exactly the same time, both looking abashed. Rick glared once at Remy before continuing. We had some disagreement about whether animism could be used to make an omelet. Remy <laughs> wiped a sheen of slime away from her face with a cloth, then tossed it onto the counter beside her. Turns out it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Zeke scooped a fresh and completely inanimate omelet out of a pan and onto a waiting plate. After yesterday, we weren't going to get you until everything was ready. Did the explosion wake you? 
Nah, Nightingale <laughs> grinned. Explosion. She helped straighten things up. Then the four of them sat down to eat. It was only after she had eaten her portion and the scraps left over from everyone else that Nightingale realized just how hungry she'd been. As they were finishing up, someone knocked on the door, and Zeke left to deal with it. He returned a moment later with a familiar figure just behind him. Khufu! Nightingale was up in an instant, practically bouncing with energy. She loped over and hopped up around him for a friendly hug. What are you doing here? Khufu pried her off gently, looking a little stern. Your father sent me. You're urgently needed back at the castle. He looked between them. Zeke, you've been called for as well. Hmm. Zeke and Nightingale exchanged a worried look. Khufu ignored their exchange. <clears throat> You're the new knight, right? Khufu had to look up a little to meet Rook's eyes. You too. Oh, you guys are so screwed. Rumi drolled with a worried tone. I bet they found out what happened last night. Shut the fuck Khufu up, Rumi. turned, facing Remy with obvious confusion. What? What do you mean? What happened? Remy looked away, one of her wings twitching. Uh, never mind. In either case, I'm not royalty and I'm not Nightingale's knight. I'm sure your family won't want me to tag along. Nightingale bit her lip, considering. It probably wasn't a good idea to antagonize her father after being summoned for discipline. She darted oh. over, mm. hugging Remy briefly. I don't care. She was smiling at Remy now. Please come with us. Forget what my father wants. I want you there. Oh, okay. It was hard to tell if Remy looked nervous or relieved. It's not like I've got anywhere else to be. Now that we've graduated and all. The sooner we leave, the better. Khufu glanced back at the hallway he came from. He looked a little worried now. <clears throat> King Balthazar didn't say what this was about. He only said that I had to fly here as fast as I could. I've got a pretty good idea what it's about. Nightingale groaned, running one hand through her unruly hair. So much for having enough time to get ready. Let's just go. Waiting for him to get even angrier isn't going to make it any better. Uh oh. Wait, what do you think he wants? Trouble. He just mm -hmm. executes Nightingale <laughs> for disobeying me. <laughs> Cuts her head off. Next time, that'll be you. <laughs> what was the name this time? All right, the Arson Castle. The Arson Castle. Arson Castle was just on the outskirts of the city, a lone monolith in the center of the city's mysterious lake. As they crossed the imposing bridge, there was only a trickle of those with official business coming and going. Remy realized how different it looked up close and in the light of day. She looked over at Rook, who seemed just as awestruck as she felt. I guess I'm going to have to get used to coming here, Rook muttered, staring off at the distant castle. Remy followed his eyes and found herself suddenly shivering. There was something about the castle, something she hadn't noticed before. Maybe it was the proportions. Most of the windows looked too large from this distance. The front doors might be massive and intimidating, but they were also directly in proportion with everything else. As they continued to cross the bridge, she refused to look over the side into the swirling water far below. Something was swimming around down there, always circling, always waiting. You and me both. Nightingale looked uncomfortable. You can tell it wasn't built by humans. They did their best to make it livable, but you can still tell. It was originally a fortress, not a castle, Rook nodded. <laughs> it was in the middle of a lake. I bet tearing it apart and rebuilding it was pretty expensive, Zeke said, flicking the charred butt of a cigarette over the edge of the bridge and down into the moat. <laughs> Let me do the talking, <laughs> Nightingale said, her voice flat. What we got into was my fault. You tried to stop me, Rook, and the rest of you were against it too. My father can think whatever he damn well wants to about me, but I don't want this hurting you guys. If you say Kill so, them all. Rick said, despite <laughs> his words, hey, Remy didn't think Rick was even going to consider Nightingale's instructions. They moved quickly up to the top of the pyramid. Oh my god, what's that from? No. no, I think it's, I was trying to channel Lemongrad from uh, Adventure Time. No, He's got that it. super shrill. Is that the, oh, that's the yellow guy, Lemon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah uh... <laughs> <laughs> what is he? I accept the Oh, that's how it fucking that's goes. It. I can't do that yeah, register. It's because you're not high on cocaine to, <laughs> to get that voice acting done. God. Just waited. Servants ushered them in, muttering deferentially to Nightingale and Zeke and not asking about the others. They were quickly brought into the throne room, where a meeting was already in session. The king and queen sat on their thrones, back straight and expressions mask-like. 
Balthazar looked even more tense than he'd been at the party. And Kezia had bags under her eyes. They weren't alone either. Nightingale's brother and sister were there, along with Zeke's uncle Yoon and his mother Ida. With the way he behaved last night, Rumi never would have thought Yoon would be at a royal gathering. How considerate of my little sister to grace us with her presence, Yol muttered, just loud enough for them to hear as they approached the thrones. We've only been waiting, what, an hour? Balthazar did not reply. Besides the fact that this guy is obviously a villain. <laughs> he looks rather villainous. Right. And who is this? this? That's her brother. That's her brother? Yeah, Ooh. very much a traitor. Yeah. Uh, he's calling it, calling it now, Yol, Yol Arson. Yol uh, main, Arson. Main villain. Main villain, huh? Instead he rose, clearing his throat. He does have fucking shadow Good hands. Back, daughter. He nodded respectfully to Zeke. <laughs> I'm relieved you made it also. This information concerns your family as well as ours. The king hardly seemed to see Rook standing there. Though at least there was nothing judgmental in Balthazar's expression. For Remy, there was only confusion and a little annoyance on his face. Nightingale seemed to have noticed too because she reached back, resting one arm on Remy's shoulder. Remy could see Nightingale's body tense under her father's gaze. Balthazar looked as though he were going to say something about Remy's presence. Then he sighed and sat back down. There is little time, rulers and guardians of Alinea. Kesey and I should already be on the road. We cannot waste time with the formalities I would prefer. Ida cleared her throat, though she didn't rise from her seat. Your memorial hunt. I could never forget that day. Her voice was more than a little strained. Balthazar bowed his head slightly in Kezia's direction. I will bring the most glorious trophy yet in Lowe's memory, Lady Ida. You have my word. She sighed. I'm sure he would have been flattered. Unfortunately, this year's hunt has come at an inopportune time, Balthazar continued. He looked to Kezia, seating himself again on the throne. He sat back down and Kezia rose. The queen was every bit Balthazar's match for confidence. Her voice clear and loud in the mostly empty throne room. You were all aware of the growing tension between Alinea and our nearest neighbor, the Empire of Brahma. <coughs> Not really, Nightingale interrupted. Nope. I know they've hated us since Alinea was founded, but I don't know why, or why it always seems to be getting worse. Kezia turned towards Nightingale. Because of oil, It didn't duh. seem angry to have been interrupted. <laughs> the details well, would take either. time we don't have to explain. Suffice That's it to say that pick. Brahma has always claimed Alinea as its territory, mom? but never used... Uh, <laughs> Zeke's. <laughs> nice, nice bill for a mom there, Zeke. Hey, mom. He looked back to his childhood very fondly when he was milk <laughs> when, when I was breastfed. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. I, God that's damn. Why he, has a, that he has the oral fixation. No, that's it. He just needs <laughs> a milkies. Nothing like her. My mom was milkies. <laughs> Gosh. Jesus. Everyone's so fucking hot in this world. <laughs> Everyone is hot. Jesus. <laughs> I'm getting the sweats. <laughs> What if, like, that was, like... Because you know how, like, whenever they go from Earth into uh, Elenia, they change? Yeah. Uh, what if, like, it, it, the static thing that happens to everyone is you just become super hot? Super hot. I mean, yeah. if you're going to be immortal, at least you should Might be... Might as well be hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't want to be fucking fat. We declared our exactly. independence. They failed to recognize us as a state. Yul spoke up from his chair. Brahm is larger and more powerful than Elenia. The best intelligence we have suggests their soldiers outnumber ours ten to one. They have their own version of the Demiurge too. A cabal of sorcerers and mercenaries what do you think it called takes the to put that outfit on? Probably takes like an hour. Or magic. <laughs> or magic. Just, just magic. Just, just mm -hmm. prestigitate it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I'd imagine. Yeah. Right. Uh, I said anything. Yeah, magic that was exists. A stupid question. Yeah, I know. It was really stupid. Why the fuck do I even bother? <laughs> I don't even talk. I should just kill myself. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there's options. The initiation rites alone would leave you scared. That's enough, Kezia interrupted. The peace envoy will be arriving within the month. Yol will conduct the negotiations and attempt to alleviate tensions before they escalate things. The peace envoy will be arriving within the month. Yol will conduct the negotiations and attempt to alleviate tensions before they escalate things. Yol? Why Yol? Oh my God, Ida Zhang's voice thing. was a matter of fact. Her arms folded. Take this as no slight to your son. But, but Yol's a dickhead. Of handling such delicate matters. He's hot-headed. Yol simply nodded at the remark, unfazed by the comment. Kezia threw her aside. He has killed look. a man or two. Ida, I have <laughs> no choice. Trifles. I have confidence that he'll do fine. His work at delegating peace in Fair Edge has been commendable. You mean Shayless's work in Fair Edge. 
Ida said, glancing sideways towards Nightingale's sister. Shayla stood. Yola and Nally have proven themselves more than capable of diplomacy. If it wasn't for them, I might be on the gallows in Fair Edge right now. Speaking of Nalia, where is she? Ida tapped her fingers rhythmically on the chair she sat in. My wife has left to Fair Edge. The Wolfert family has requested her presence as a formality. We're playing along, Yol said calmly. Ida relaxed a little. Kezia, it should be you who delegates the peace envoy. You could sell a king his own castle. If you're not going to be here, that must mean you're leaving to the west. Unfortunately, yes, Kezia said with a look at Ida. <clears throat> Remy's friends looked as confused as she felt. Remy looked between the two noble ladies, trying to read whatever silent conversation had passed between them. Well, we don't have high hopes for the negotiations. <laughs> Brahman oh. knows they have us outmatched. We're afraid they may have come to offer terms we can't accept. I will not be attending the negotiations no, because I will be visiting private. some of our closest <laughs> allies to secure a military aid against the invasion we believe may be inevitable. Kizi will travel back to her parents' house in the far west. The Lucera family will aid us if the worst were to transpire, Balthazar said. I expect the rest of my family to be in attendance when the Romanian delegation arrives. He turned, glancing to the little cluster of chairs the Zhongs had pulled together. And as many of yours as can be available, Lady Ida. My son has Alinea's best interest at heart, but lacks the wisdom that comes of experience. Balthazar rose to his feet again, resting one hand on the hilt of the sword at his waist. Should Yol be killed, the succession will pass to Shalis, then to you, Nightingale. May there be no need. Why am I here? Nightingale asked, and Balthazar paused. We keep our business private, he said. But you've graduated. You're part of the family now, Nightingale. That means you're part of our meetings from now on, too. Did you think politics was all about running our city? Yes. Prepare yourself, daughter. We fought for our kingdom, and we'll likely be fighting to keep it. He turned, offering his hand to Kezia. She took it, rose, and glared down at them. I expect all of you to be on your best behavior while we're gone. Nightingale nodded and watched as a retinue of soldiers followed closely behind her parents as they left the room. Remy found herself out in the courtyard of the castle. Together, the group watched from a balcony as King Balthazar departed in an extravagant carriage. Zeke was smoking again, though he looked a little uneasy. Sometimes I wonder if... Once again, gap. <laughs> like, yeah. line break. Yeah. Zeke's point of view. <laughs> yeah, are you, like, double-fisting the smokes? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actually, like, Wolverine cloth. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a resident that do that. Just really? Just both, and he just... Wow, it just... Just fucking... Just went back and forth? Him. Yeah. That's, uh... That's not healthy. <laughs> well, you know, um... He... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, right? Yeah. Going through the advancement made all of us lose our minds. Nobody realizes because we're all just as crazy. He looked away. Blow was my dad. But if it were me, what I'd from. still put the memorial... Two and a half packs. Essentially, it's that's never putting a cigarette down. Yeah. That is, all, that is having one at all times. Wow. It is ridiculous. Wow. I'm amazed that, like, in... <clears throat> that's allowed... Like no no he did not at my facility oh, oh that's I see. what he was doing at home oh so I see. like my facility was actually rather restraining for him yeah dang yeah that's rough it's like mm, you're in here because you have not stopped smoking like that. <laughs> your lungs are non-existent yeah that's rough yeah I'll hunt on hold if it seemed like my kingdom was going to be invaded you know must be an important hunt Rook muttered I'm not going to assume they don't know what they're doing I guess there is more to it. I don't care what nefarious things my dad does on his lame hunt. I don't want to think about politics or war or any of that. We need to be more positive. Nightingale God, waved at the retreating up. carriage. Gosh. Zeke raised an eyebrow. More positive? Like, how if everyone dies, you become queen? <laughs> what? Nightingale put a hand on her hip. No, you dolt. I mean that my dad is gone. She still looked pale, yet some of her original energy seemed to be bubbling back. We graduated yesterday. We're full citizens of Madara. There's a whole world full of adventure out there. And the only one who might stop us is riding off in that carriage. Zeke nodded. I've meant to get on into Alinea proper. What's the point of being able to leave the Institute if we spend all our time at home? My family left me with some cash as a graduation present. Mine did too. Nightingale seemed to be getting more excited by the moment. I bet if we pulled it, we could have enough for new gear for all of us. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like we we're talking about. Oh man, my family just left us a hundred gold, and, you, and like Remy just <clears throat> is lucky to have a place to sleep. <laughs> and like, Rook's duty bound to keep this annoying bitch alive. <laughs> it's like we're just like mm-hmm, all the money. We get to go on vacation. And my daddy left, and they're like. The, the neighboring country wants to take us over? <laughs> Vacation! <laughs> it's like, my family's at risk. <laughs> Vacation! Eleni has always been a hub for adventures. I bet we'll find some great stuff. Nightingale and Zeke pulled out small pouches and began counting how much gold they had. All right, so we gain, depending on how much XP the adventurers have earned, uh, including XP they've spent. So, um... So we've spent <clears throat> three... And we have four sitting? Yes. So we have seven. Oh, okay. Uh, well, never mind. That's not nearly as much gold as I thought. Because I thought it was... I thought it was... Because um, did we spend three? Oh, yeah. To get our core... Falling bonus spent on how much XP the adventurers have earned, including XP they've spent. Yeah, so we only get ten gold. Oh, damn. That sucks. Well, I mean... Well, we've done every challenge. We have not been... That's true. So we only have 153 I mean, gold instead of 243, like I thought. <laughs> we can just... Yeah. All right. Nightingale's excitement was infectious. Even Rook's like mind started turning. Bucks. She like, oh, seemed kind of determined to get herself into danger on a regular That's true. basis. Some new gear might be just what he needed to be a better knight. Could be fun, he agreed. And when we're done, Nightingale hardly even seemed to hear him. We'll have everything we need to finish exploring the vaults. They all stared. It took a moment to realize what she was suggesting. <clears throat> Are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, Zeke said through a billow of smoke. We got the whole monster mash after us last time. Hographer probably hasn't forgotten about us. Rook cleared his throat. I admit I was curious last time, but we've seen it now. It's out <clears throat> of our league. Psh! <clears throat> Nine waved a dismissive hand, her tail swishing about behind her. We were just unprepared the first time. Think about it. Now that we know Hographer is down there, we can be much more careful. I haven't been able to stop thinking about what was on that pedestal. Whatever it was has to be epic. I mean, some real purple color loot. <laughs> I'm down. Remy's voice was so sweet. <laughs> they all turned. Meta. She cleared her throat, then continued. I mean, we'll have better gear. It's not like we couldn't get away from Hographer last time. Yeah! Nightingale embraced Remy, wrapping one arm around her shoulder. Rimdog gets it! Zeke extinguished Stop a cigarette along the that. railing, flicking the butt over the side. It's a stupid idea, but I guess... I guess I'm down. After we spend some time in the city first. Yeah, buddy! Nightingale yelled as she slapped Zeke on the back. <laughs> then ass. she turned to Rook. <laughs> you don't have to come, she began. I know my father made you a knight, but I... I'm coming. <laughs> You'll probably need Surrey's help again Which to find her way around, <laughs> and you wouldn't have her help without me there. That's more like it, Nightingale's grin returned. But first, let's go shopping. <laughs> All right, story round, the city of Elenia. Yay. Boom, here we go. Ooh. So, we have... <laughs> All right, so... Tip buying the right gear. Any players are instructed to go to a story round. Anytime players are instructed to go to a story round, they go through all the steps listed on the story round. During story round, players can buy new items, spend XP to learn new disciplines, and embark on side quests. <laughs> Each time players initiate a story round for the first time, a new unique item will be for sale. So if you can't afford it now, you can always come back later when you return with more gold from a side quest. Um, monsters in Madara can be difficult to kill. For this reason, we recommend prioritizing new weapons over... Other gear in most cases. If players cannot afford new weapons, it's recommended to embark on the side quest to earn the gold required to purchase new weapons before continuing the main quest. Mm. So first round, story of the the city of Helenia. So we can shop and train. One random mundane unique item. Is One random unique mundane item. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a bop right there. Um, that's common... Give me that mundane. It's gonna be somewhere in here. Ah, maybe. Oh, is this our crew in the shop? Yeah, huh? yeah, I think it looks a little different than her art there. It's a different angle. What was it? Uh, one random. Oh yeah, mundane, unique item. So not even 
Um, oh. <coughs> Is it just item? Uh, All accessories. Do, 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 do. All upgrades players have unlocked. One random mundane unique item. <coughs> okay, so there's no unique weapons. These are all accessories. Is there really only just the one? So there's a mundane unique accessory. That's one. Um. Do, 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 do. Yeah, because I think, unless it's all in the back. Rare, 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 unique. Yeah, that, that might be the only thing available for mundane. <clears throat> but I can't imagine that they would just have just one one random mundane unique item. This is an outfit designed for Zeke. Yeah, it's very sexy. Yeah, mundane. So relic. it is a unique accessory. So what's that slot? Okay, we only have one accessory slot. Yep. Gotcha. So that one provides the status of healing. Ooh. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I think that might that might be it. Okay. So all the basic shit, and that's our one special item. Yep. Because I can't. Uh... Oh wait, hold on. One more. Yeah. Mundane, unique. There we go. Here's all the mundane, unique stuff. Okay. Okay. So then, what is that? It's a mundane, unique accessory. I guess I just didn't... Combine them. Yep. So okay. we have a, a core relic, weapon, weapon... Oh, God, look. We could have this sword. Oh, yeah. We could have this bow. Hey, yeah. We could have this spear. Hey. We could have this shield. Ooh. All right, so it looks like... Yeah, we just shuffle this, and this is... That's what's at this shop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, man, you got a little butt cheek right there. I know. Look at them short ass skirts. Look ass, and she just farts, and that's <laughs> it blows oh, the yeah, wind. Oh yeah, this full Marilyn Monroe this shit. I just, I thought this was the the shopkeep. Nope, that's you. That's Zeke. Can you put a shirt on? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no, I know. No, I can't. No, that's a shirt. You asking me makes me want to cut your face off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the random item that this shop sells forever. Give it to me. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven. One through seven. Let's use fate. Fate. So we shall boom. I think it's a random number. Uh, I thought I had a random number on this phone, but I guess I don't. So uh, we'll just do this one. Ha! The core. Unique core. Passive. Anytime you heal, for every damage token healed after you are at zero damage, may add an energy token to this card. Limit three. Whenever you would be dealt damage, for each damage that would be dealt, you may remove one energy token from this card instead. <coughs> okay. Oh, it's a heart box. And it adds one to your um, <coughs> your defense. Okay, I wanted to Damn it! I wanted one of these weapons! I know. <laughs> for every damage token healed... So if you heal over, oh, it, it carries over into gotcha. into that. That's pretty neat. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's another core. I know we're kind of used to our cores I right don't now. like my core. You don't like your core? Mm. Just to generate... At the end of the encounter, if you had this core equipped since the beginning of the encounter, gain a single consumable item of your choice, from, which I keep forgetting to do, hence why, which gives me... Did you get one for last round? No, because I, I forgot, and I can't carry any more mm, anyway. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, how much does that even cost? 45 monies! 45. I'm going to roll Persuasion to reduce the price. Damn. It didn't work, you failed. It was embarrassing, actually. So, yeah. Um, I'd be more than happy to sell that and pick that up. Okay. Um, but I lose my Conviction upgrade with with that. Conviction so, my upgrade. Convictions would be too purple. Mm. No. I was like, right, so if we, if we trade that to that. him... That would give he'd be maxed out on relics. Yeah, um, and I think mundane mundane always sells for like a flat number. It's based off the level of the item. Mm -hmm. Not. Um, let's see. 
Item tiers, 27. Maybe that's where it's at. Yep, five gold is how much that would sell for. So it would knock it down to 40 mm. <coughs> if we wanted to give that to him. Yeah. Because uh, you like your defensive core. She doesn't even have... Oh, yeah, she does. She has a defensive core that lets her dodge. Um, it also gives her hit points too, right? It does, yeah. So I would actually be changing nothing because... Um, Still the same defense value. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, overheal is pretty cool. Yeah. So if we want to give that to Zeke... Little heart box for forty. Yeah, for, sure. I mean, then it's just in the party, and yeah. we can move it as necessary. That's true. So one thirteen. That's where we are at. All right. Well, I mean, otherwise it's just consumables because I think we're pretty satisfied because we <clears throat> pretty well dug through it and got whatever we wanted last time. Right. Short of buying more relics for people, because like he has no relic. I might eyeball the relics real quick. Enchanted piercings! After making a roll, re-roll any of your dice. Conviction upgrade white. Fight drive. Make an attack. Once per encounter, an extra attack. That's not too shab. Wand of Micelles as a relic. Choose the target of a spell. Increase your spirit influence by two. They might be interested in adding that to her repertoire. For they what? Increases. She can increase her range uh, with a spell once per encounter. Oh, that's not horrible. Um, yeah, by two. by two by two for your sure influence. So that's just place. six. Yeah. yeah, once per encounter. We also can uh, explore as a group. Choose one of the following, and then proceed to a listed page. You may not choose a side quest you've already attempted this adventure. If you have no side quest, you can choose. You just or you decide you don't want to explore side quest. Continue to venture forth. Mm -hmm. So we have. Uh, okay, so we can't attempt a level one bounty because it doesn't exist. Um, uh, the only bounty that this the Act 1 comes with is a single level 2 bounty. So we have two side quests we can do. Loa Problems or Cave Sickle Extermination. Mm -hmm. um, Loa Problems. It says, tip, we recommend playing this one first. <laughs> Loa Problem? Yeah, but I fucking don't want to deal with water loas. And then, well, it's sickle-wise. They're probably going to have like a mother sickle. Oh, yeah. Probably. He's, he has PTSD from both <laughs> of those. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm game. Can't. They're, they're, Remy, give me give me a peek at that ass again. I mean, we haven't seen them at full form when they have the full pack power. You know, so. you know what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, I think Remy wants a wants a piece of the Zhang. You think she wants some Zhang? Well, I mean, look at this. She's only paying attention to her while he's showing off his blade. He's like, oh, man, I can wield this one hand, and I'm like I'm like Cloud. Except Cloud's a bitch compared to me. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> like, who's Cloud? Some game I played back on yeah. Earth. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's subpar. <laughs> I will. I think I'm going to buy some Chandy Piercings. How much? Then. They are 15 monies. 15 monies. So that knocks us down to 98. Yeah. I might, because she's my deeps. Would it be unreal, real, reasonable for me to make another purchase for another 15? No, no, that's fine. Okay, I thought that's I'd give her a fight drive, two. because she's the big attacker. All right, 83. Uh, yeah, what was it? Any relics. It's not bad for 18. Yeah. 18. Yeah, I think I'll grab that for her. Yep. And we can spend XP, which oh, I yeah, very much mind. We have four, right? 18, so 75, 65. All right. I'm going to look through Sanctus first for him. See what kind of... So. Yeah, typically we don't do this kind of stuff over... Uh, on the video. On the video, but... Uh, oh, it's also... Oh, this is double. Um, oh, so I can actually... How do you flip this? Oh, I guess you... Combo is Spellcraft, which I have. Okay. Per encounter when she's in targets of a spell. Yeah, God damn. Good. Yeah, so <clears throat> we for blade works. Yeah, we have four. So if I did, it was an additional one to get another level for disciplines of the same level. Yeah. Okay. So to get yeah okay for each of the same level. Okay. Yeah, disciplines thirty four. Just want to. Yeah. Plus one XP for each other, yeah, for every other discipline of the same level. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not even of the same discipline. It just has to be of the same. God damn! Look at this. 
I could do fucking magic damage with my armor value. Oh, that's interesting. Courage Stifle. I cast a spell six. Deal magic damage equal to two times your total armor value. A flat ten. Ew. I think, was it five or four that I had? I think I have, fuck, I have one, two, three. Let's see here. I think it's four. I have four armor. So it's eight damage. That's pretty, that's pretty not bad. That isn't bad. That isn't bad. Is that a level two? Actually, it's level one. That's level one? Yeah. So yeah, that would be all your XP to get that. I think what we will do. Hmm. What does? Because none of us here have subterfuge. Oh, damn. Quick blow during the follow-up step of your attack. Other than your attack made with quick blow, you make another attack. You may choose to do. Ooh, that's pretty good. Murder circus, like a shadow. What's an What's an intervention token? I need to see that. Two, oh, maybe two. Nice, nope, nice, I don't. Nice. No way that could, though. You didn't make an attack if you roll the lowest. Oh, check this out. Kill the messenger. Subterfuge for him mm -hmm. is if you have a two handed range weapon, which I could, mm -hmm. when making an attack, if you roll the lowest result on the combat dice, you may change a single die to the highest result. Oh, nice. So I could I could do blade works and do stuff with his range. Oh, gross. If I want to do that. Rerolls are always amazing. That could be pretty cool. So that oh, one I can't do. Cool. I could really just make him a dodge master. Yeah. But oh, shit, level twos cost five. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, they're yeah. So we can't get any level twos. You can save up if you want. Yeah. Um. But I think what's another? Oh, boy? cool! Look at this one. This is level two though. I can't get it. But it's a once per encounter, place a defeated ally within sphere of influence. They heal equal to half their maximum HP. That's nice. So bring them back. That is super nice. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. So he could start fucking generating rerolls with his, with his uh, points. Oh, okay. Like he could just fucking start giving out rerolls. Nice, nice, nice. Or he could give everybody like barrier. So then gives everybody armor as he's spending those. That's... He has to exhaust it. He can only do it once per turn, but it's just like one stamina point. Yeah. And then give people either barrier or he can give them reroll tokens. Man, I don't know how I want to level up Zeke. Or it can be an unbeatable tank. I know you have quite a few to pick from. Right? Like, because I could do anticipated attack as a passive when making a dodge, gain two books to give plus one dodge. Mm -hmm. So it would make his dodge as good. Um, let's see. Fortuitous homicide. It, I can exhaust it to counter. Um, Which ones are you looking at? I'm looking at Something the marshal. Critical defense. At the start of every encounter, I gain a dodge token, and my attacks gain fo uh, follow-up. Using a, a burst, uh, follow-up, gain a dodge token. Oh, nice. So I can just have him constantly be dodgy. But, man, we're making a mate. This attack gains... Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Chains of command. We're making a... Melee attack, this attack gains reach 2, and star burst gives command 3, force X plus the difference hit, or X equals 6 plus the level of your highest martial discipline. So, command 3, what is, oh, I think that's where I get to control them. Mm. Command is uh, not on here, so that's pretty helpful. <clears throat> nope, that's common. What does command do? I think this could be like right in the middle. Okay, command. Move the target up to in any orthogonal direction. The target does not provoke a break attack from the figure that uses this ability. Thanks. Interesting. 42. Command is ability that moves an opposing figure in any single orthogonal direction. The figure using it once up to the amount listed. Push, pull, or command are a type of free movement. The target of a push, pull, or command does not provoke a break attack from the figure that uses the ability. If a figure is moved into obstructing terrain or into, see, sorry, right. or into another figure using push, they stop moving and are dealt the <clears throat> remainder of the movement as irreducible damage. While the figure is being moved by push, they cannot use actions. Interesting. The Earth Lower uses put. It, that's interesting. So I, I could, like, have my, my short swords, like, on chains mm -hmm. and throw them. And if they fail, I mean, it would be it'd be a force of 6 plus the level of my highest martial discipline, which would be 1, so it would be a force of 7 to not be able to, for me to basically push them, because I, I, it sounds like I can just make them go off the edge. Oh, nice. If I wanted to. 
Did you see this fucking um, follow through? Yes, uh, that's the one that gives me counter. It will give you no. Uh, you could ignore armor. Oh, really? Yeah. If making an attack, if you have two light weapons equipped while flanking, this attack ignores armor. Are both of your weapons light? They are. By short swords are light. But you have to be flanking. Yeah. So. So there's a little more of a thing I mean, there. It gives but me the strategy that I'm wanting in combat. If we, yeah. if I mean, well, actually, oh no, I have to take that because there was one in here that gave him. Like extra movement, I think it was in there. Mm -hmm. that and I was like, oh man, I can just kind of run back and forth. There is a Sanctus ability that allows you to ignore fucking rough terrain rough and terrain. ally. It's called Aspect. Movement point cost is not increased by terrain or allies, and you get plus one movement. Ooh. It's huge. That is huge. <clears throat> uh, but what sucks is I have to spend, I can only pick one. Right. It depends on how I want to make play Zeke, like, I can make him a dodge master, I can make him versatile with range and uh, and weapons, I can make him, I mean, because I don't think, the way I'm building him, I'm not going to be able to make him like the heavy hitter. Mm -hmm. But I can kind of be the directional, like, chain of command would be pretty good. Because if you do chain of command and I like, make, if there's an enemy right behind another enemy, he just takes the three damage. If he if I push him into someone, oh, he just okay. takes damage, irreducible. Nice, um, but it's a pretty weak <clears throat> force, or it's a pretty easy force to. Oh, plus the difference hit. Oh, that might actually be a little bit better. So if I like hit, if their defense is eleven, or their, if their defense is eight, and I hit for twelve, it would be it'd be a six plus four, so it'd be a ten. Hmm. So that's a little bit better. Hmm. Uh, assemblage stuff. See if it's pretty damn. I think I like the idea. I am a good subterfuge. I like the idea of. Uh, oh, there it was like the shadows move up to two spaces. This attack does not provoke break attacks. I like. Kill the messenger. I think I'm gonna make him be good with swords and bows. Okay, cool. So that is all my XP with Zeke. And then, where are the familiars? They're in the in the box. Oh, okay. Because like, here's the spell familiar, and I was kind of curious how effective they were. What does it say? It just says passive. After learning this discipline, choose a familiar and place it in a face up to uh, face up next to your adventure card. Your familiar cannot be changed. Ooh, okay. Familiar was... Is there not espers, I don't think? No, it, it says loyal esper. Oh, it does? Yeah, I believe. Okay. Um, I don't think that's these. No, those are, that's something else. That, that specifically said Loyal Esper. It's like you or a Loyal Esper. I don't know. If, I think I could have a big card like that. Will they? It's like a little small one. Uh, I mean, they will have one, but... Because these are, these are conduits. I don't know. I'd have to look. Is that what you're wanting to do with her? I just wanted to see what the familiars provide. Gotcha. Just to see if they're if it's worth a damn. Um, okay. Familiars. Alright, uh, let's see, familiar is 68, right there. Uh, okay. Familiar discipline and assemblage allows an adventure to summon and maintain a small creature called familiar. Familiars give adventurers a constant benefit. Thematically, familiars are doing their own part to help out their master. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe this is small. Oh, this is a small thing. Yep, looks like there are four of them. And... Yeah, so there's the there's the four. Okay. Cool. Once chosen familiar cannot be changed until the end of the crawl scenario or adventure if you're playing the yeah, okay, so that is that. This means the familiar card may still be used even while paralyzed or in conduit form. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that. And we are gonna look at gore. Guess uh ooh god, what does disease do? 
disease. You may not have positive effects or remove damage or other effects, okay? Poison would be good. Too fast for some each turn you are dealt two or more damage from a single source. Did you hear me the Oh yeah, you did yeah. In there. What's a vow token? Oh, I just put them back up. Okay. I vow to suck your ass. Vow. Vow. Oh, right here. When you deal damage, you'll plus two damage of the same type. Ooh. That's pretty good. But do I want to uh man I might want to because that gore shot does magic damage two times your level crew or your highest level crew or discipline making an attack and you deal yourself you reduce up to your remaining ew that's gross that's also not bad <clears throat> I think I'm actually going to save up Nightingale yes to get her a higher level, because then gore damage would do four magic damage. Ooh, it'd be nice. Actually, it'd be uh, six. Mm -hmm. Sorry, total. So, I'm going to save hers. Did you uh, get his? Yeah, you I took intervention. So, he can do it for free if it's somebody else, but okay. if it's himself, it costs him a stamina. So, once per turn, I can just hand out rerolls to everybody. Oh, good deal. Because I'm like, rerolls. Within sphere of influence? Yep. Okay. So, I was like... Badass. Man, that's great. So if he is just kind of like stuck in the back, he can still hand out yeah. re-rolls, and that which, way which that reduces nice. our likelihood of fucking up. That's true. I don't know. I might get her familiar if he's going subterfuge, because I was torn between subterfuge. Are you going kind of martial subterfuge? He, I'm going to go kind of a, uh, like, yeah, martial subterfuge, kind of, you know, jack of all trades, good with bows, good with small uh, light weapons. Okay. We shall see how that works out. Especially with Kill the Messenger, if I swap to my bow, then I roll, you know, the lowest on purple. I can be like, oh, actually, now it's a, <laughs> now it's a seven. Yeah. Because a one on that sucks. And it's an exhaust, not a once per turn. So, do we want to do the lower problems, or do we want to do Cave Sickle Extermination? I think Zeke wants to get a little even. Okay, I'm game, sickles. I'm game. <laughs> he walks in, <laughs> dies immediately. God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to... I might, I might make her assemblage. That sounds kind of fun. Give her a little little buddy. Because she has no actual friends. Yeah. Uh, right, what choose, do I want? The Tristan wisely. Spirit? The Zuxa? One that gives lets her heal when she hurts enemies? One where she can dodge and gain special points? Or special points, damage points? Or I can deal extra physical damage, but it's just like it's just one physical damage? Your physical damage equal to your highest level assemblage discipline. Oh, which would be one right now. Okay. Because you yeah. only have the level one. You only go to level, like... Five? Yeah. I think is what they go up to. Oh, no, four. Okay. But, I mean, the one where she heals if she deals damage would be good because she has them. But then there's one that increases her movement, and then she'd be moving eight. That's true. And then this one also makes it worse if she doesn't you know, do break attack so she can escape if she gets harried. Or I can just make her a little more, just a little tougher. Hmm, what would she, I think the Zooksa looks more of her spirit animal, what do you think? Absolutely not. No? No, I would not, I, I would not put that way, actually, can I see them? I didn't even really yeah, look sure. at they're, them. Yeah, sure, they're pretty neat. Yeah. This one, for sure. No, oh, yeah? It would be more her, just off the art. <laughs> um... By deal physical damage equal to your highest level assemblage, removing a but as a flip effect, remove an effect from a figure within. It's a door. free heal that yeah. once per encounter, and the fact that uh, it's not even a free heal. It's like, oh, you're paralyzed. Exactly, that's what I meant. Like oh, a yeah. status effect, yeah. like a full blown. Uh, yeah. What's it called? A remedy. Animism uh, is pretty good. It gives her more health, mm. and as a flip, she gets to throw like a fireball. Yeah. Um, I mean, be tougher. That's pretty cool. Any of these would be pretty good, and I imagine the higher the assemblage, like maybe the better off they are. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a familiar look. You can actually in the assemblage actually summon these, like you can summon figures onto the map. Oh, cool! Um, just it looks like the. But level. this is just like the familiar. Yeah. What was yeah. it again? It was a uh, was it familiar? Called? It's just called familiar. familiar. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. Whatever it's 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 your character to build. If you want to go thematic, 
uh, like kind of how we've been playing her. Yeah. I think the. I mean, like her lineage comes from like dark, shady people. Like if she leans into that, you know, it's probably more subterfuge. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, if if we don't do the familiar. Yeah. I don't know. I could do quick blow. Just spend one stamina and I attack again. Yeah. And then she does disgusting damage. Probably not a bad move. Or we could just save up. Or you can save up. Have the two females of the group save up. Yeah. Um, I think a familiar would be really nice. I would imagine as it gets higher, like, summons are always great. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're not feeling it, if it doesn't make sense. Yeah, maybe there's respec at some point. I don't know. Huh. It's like so you're going the subterfuge, like you're kind of a fast guy. Yep. She's doing all magic damage. He's doing support slash tank. I mean she's kind of our DPS. Yeah. Like he's a little bit of DPS, but not really. Mm hmm He's um, mobility. I'm gonna yeah. he's he's, 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 he's yeah. Like utility kind of fighter. Yeah. Um that's kind of the route I'm gonna go. Mm hmm I'd like to mix up her damage type. Uh, fuck. I guess I think I'll do quick blow. But what was it? What was follow through? That was uh. Oh damn! So I could just take all my extra like, all my extra stamina points and just turn them into extra damage. Oh yeah. For the top effect, and I, I couldn't use the bottom effect, but Ooh. the top effect would just be spending all XP for half a card. Yeah, but uh, I mean, we can we can tie it with her ability at times where it gives everyone an SP. I mean, that'd be at five damage. I'm like, yeah, well, it's like so I spend the two to attack, and then if I have like full five and I hit, that's six extra damage. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's all it is. And then quick blows, possibly like for one stamina, a whole extra attack that mm -hmm. could just be yeah, during the follow up step of your attack. Other than your attack made with quick blow, make another attack. You may choose a new target, so it's just. Yeah, follow up, so I have to hit, right? Mm hmm. Okay, so if I succeed in the attack, and then I'm like, okay, quick blow, and we'll attack <clears> again. So that would really. And then plus fight drive. Yeah, we're gonna go quick blow. Alright. She's just gonna be a fucking mean DPS. Alright. So the only person left with XP is Nightingale. <clears throat> she has four. Needs one more to get a higher level, probably crew or. Okay. So, do we want. We're doing cave sickle exper extermination. Sure. Fun. All right, so that is our side quest. We will uh, go into that in the next video. That was the our first story round. Nice. So that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stick around for the rest of the series. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.